Okay, so let's call the meeting to order. Um, and could I, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 27th? So moved. Well, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye, 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 aye. Okay, good. So the center school. Um, Who's taking minutes today? Alan. Alan. Okay. Alan. No, but good. Good to ask. <laughs> um, so our mission, whether it's we can complete it today or have to meet again, is to um, decide what we're presenting, what we're saying and, and presenting to the select board on at their meeting on April 11th, um, further to our recommendations about um, putting the center school out for a bid for sale and including a preservation restriction uh, or requiring a preservation restriction, which is, I suppose, one of the questions we should talk about. Um, how to proceed? Uh, sorry, I, I just got off a phone call where I suddenly said yes to doing something I had no intention to do that will take Kazillion hours, so I'm a little. Hello. No, I'm just stupid, and mostly in Spanish. <laughs> but, Does he speak Spanish? Uh, I can understand it. Yeah, I can understand it. Um, well, I think we've already approved to require a restriction. We have. We have. And my sense of. And I don't remember where I, if I read this or just assumed this was that they were expecting preservation restriction wording from us. Exactly, exactly. And one of the things that I um, was trolling around for late last week, and as you could see, it sort of arrived in tranches today, um, very large tranches, is whether we should be recommending a restriction to be held by the Mass Historical Commission, as is the one on town hall, or to be held by the town with the Historical Commission acting as the town's agent, which is essentially the way the, that's why I asked for the um, Waitley Center Woods document. I wanted to see how that was worded since I knew the Conservation Commission uh, holds that restriction. Um, and, and I'm not sure what the benefits of each approach are. I'm not uh, sure, we, are sure we have a choice. Uh, it, I suspect that the only reason Mass Historical held the other one is because the town is the owner. I, as I read the legislation that I sent out actually relatively early today, I think we do have a choice. Well, I know they have to approve it. And they have to approve that they have to approve it no matter who holds it. Yeah, yeah, that was clear that in um, that the State Historical Commission would have to approve any um, preservation okay. restriction, whether held by them. <laughs> well, obviously, they would approve that by a, another nonprofit or by the town. Um, any, any restriction that is held in perpetuity. What, what's interesting to me is that um, when Alan Sanderson and I were talking about preservation restrictions from the CPC point of view um, with Stuart Saginaw last summer, he mentioned that the state um, required uh, a hand if anything were held, if a, if a restriction is held for longer than 30 years. Uh, there's nothing in the legislation that I saw that makes a distinction about a specific time period is simply in perpetuity or not in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. But in any case, I believe we're, we're recommending a, a reservation to be held in perpetuity. I, I don't know if, if we were to decide that we want to pass historical, I think it would, would behoove us to check that they actually do this for a private entity. Restriction held by a private uh, owned property by a private entity, but I'm not sure if I would recommend doing it because, um, as this 
operates, somebody has to sign off on repairs to the preserved stuff. And I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to wait for Mass Historical Commission to sign off on, on small repairs. And I think it would be very burdensome for the prospective owner. Burdensome on us to administer it too, but it would be, I think, cruel and unusual treatment probably. I think you're right. And I also think you're right that I, I read it. I just looked at it, uh, the document again. You're right. <laughs> you're right about what the Mass Historical Commission will, will do and won't do. Um, so, but they would have to sign off on something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I read again the document that we saw that um, we signed for town hall, which I had remembered as being incredibly onerous. And I, I think in retrospect, it's not actually very complicated. It was just an incredibly lengthy and onerous process to get them to sign <laughs> to sign it. Um, so, uh, but one of the things I wondered, which is not in the town hall document is whether, but is in some of the other things that we looked at, both the conservation restriction and that, uh, did anybody get a chance to look at that RFP from Maynard that I sent out this afternoon? If you didn't really, it's fine. Because actually, actually yeah. Going forward, I think that's the most helpful. Of I thought that was just a great document and it showed up, you know, while I was on a conference <laughs> for something completely different. I, I um, And they sent a bunch of other stuff too, which is not really pertinent to a preservation restriction, but I think could be very helpful to the town in figuring out how to present the building because they did a really nice job of that. But my point, which I will get to eventually, is that one of the things that that document did that I liked was not simply to say, you know, we are requiring that whoever buys this building preserve the exterior, but to um, enumerate the, the most important features of the exterior. And I wondered if we should be putting together something that does that, which you did a little bit, Judy, in your, um, I'm sure you did this part of the, um, the ad hoc committee's work. Yeah, I, it's a very standard. It's a very standard thing to do, and I would I would really recommend it because it gives gives guidance to right to right. you know. Also, if the historical commission is administering this, fifteen years from now, when none of us are on the historical commission, it helps them understand what we were thinking about and and what's important about the building. Um, I was looking at the building just briefly this morning and wondering if anyone knows, there are now two doors at the lowest level on the north and south sides. Uh, the north one is locked, I assume. It's not used. Does anybody know if they were both part of the original building? They, they're kind of clunky. Hmm. Those are going to be important, though, I think, for um, access if, and I, my guess is whoever buys this is going to want to change the grading to I lower hope so. it. I hope so. <laughs> for, for access. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not advocating, you know, removing them or saying yeah. that they're terrible. I'm, I'm simply asking as a point of information. I don't know. We could we could look at some photographs maybe and and see. I was going to say we have. I, I looked at the couple of photographs I happen to have from, you know, uh, soon after the building the school was built, and they're both straight on yeah, shots yeah. of the facade with the with those walls kind of uh, cropped out. So I don't know. Susan, uh, you could ask Sylvia. She remembers. Okay. Yeah, I can ask her. Because how old is Sylvia? 85 ish? At least. 90 ish, yeah. I think. But yeah, so, so, so would have, but still would have been born 
born 20 to 25 years after That's it was but I, yeah, it was built. But if it was there then there's a pretty you narrowed down the right 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 yeah i wasn't at all suggesting you know saying this terrible thing has been done to the building <laughs> i suppose also that somebody who knows preservation work or construction carpentry. work well can look at it and tell well somebody who knew carpentry could certainly look well, i mean probably got to would, do the masonry in the, in the masonry you wouldn't necessarily know how many times it's been repaired or no 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 yeah um i, I will also and Judy, oh you, you mean that i thought you meant the, the door entrance you mean the physical the wooden doors no i mean the entrance i meant okay. the whole thing the whole thing okay. <laughs> no yeah um the, the, uh, center school right yeah right, okay yes yes there's nothing else that just looking at the building makes me think, wow, that doesn't belong there. The, the way, you know, of course, the little portico on Town Hall was not part of the original design. It's just practical. Um, so, so do, do we agree that we'd like to um, recommend that the town Hold the preservation restriction with the historical commission as the agent. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. Um, I'm. We also had in our letter um, a request that the milk bottle, that access to the milk bottle, be preserved for the historical society. Do you think we want to? And we suggested two means to achieve that. Um, the, uh, boy, I'm really tired. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> and, and we suggested an easement or a change easement, of law. Easement is the word that I'm looking for. But neither of those would be in the purview of the restrictions. So no, I they wouldn't. Guess. That would have to be, that will have to be a separate, a separate so clause. So we leave that to the lawyers. Right, right. Um, Okay. So we can do one of two things. We can agree uh, to do what we've just said. And I, I think I could take a pass at doing some amendment based on the town hall. Um, preservation document and circle it around. I think we've decided we can review drafts without having meetings. Yeah. Or we can meet again before April 11th. And, and I, either it's, is. It's not the draft that's the, as much the issue as the list of items to be preserved, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether. That's starting. Um, Do you want to start talking? That's going to be harder or easier, but um, they're, they're the two things. Well, if we meet April 11th, we promise something sort of mid to late April. So, no, we no, we're then. on. No, we promised we would be on their agenda on April 11th. Uh, I see. Their meeting, their meeting is April 11th. I see. So we have to have it. Well, we then. definitely have to meet before then because we can't. I mean, we have to. The list is involves decisions, not drafts. Right, right. Just the way, and I'm sorry, I'm sounding like you know all I can think about is things we've already done. But just the way, Allison and Susan were not on the historical commission at this point. We sat and went through the town hall again and again and again and came up with that list of the four or five elements that were really important. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and one other thing that the, the um, RFP from Maynard mentioned was that they were, rec they recommended that 
the sleep, if it's not maintained as sleep, be reproduced, be replaced with a similar looking roof cladding, similar in style and appearance or something. I've forgotten the exact wording. Makes sense. And that's technically not part of the secretary's yeah, it secretary doesn't, of the doesn't, interior. doesn't meet the secretary's standards. No, mm -hmm. and I, but it dawned on me that <laughs> if that were the deal breaker, if the cost of replacing, and it, it's awful that we don't know how much damage there is to that roof or what the cost of it is. If somebody goes through and gets preservation grants or state or federal tax credits, they'll have to follow the secretary standards. Right. And then and then they would have to replace the slate. If they don't do that, then then maybe the, the slate roof would be a huge impediment. But as I'm, as I'm saying this, I can't imagine anybody take that project yeah. on unless they got financing from those other places. But, right. but I wanted to, if maybe we wanted to discuss waiving, including a clause like that, right. just for the roof. Yeah. I The, um, I'm, I'm just parking your question for a moment, if I may. An interesting thing about the Maynard RFP is that it did not say that a preservation restriction had already been put on the building. It said that one would be required. And it didn't, I, I didn't want to send you all the other appendices we got, but I paged through them and we were, it, it did not include a draft um, restriction. I, I guess I'm hesitating because the roof seems to be one of the most beautiful and notable components of the building. Oh, well, the steps as well, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the steps are, the steps that's are that's gonna be a real sticking point. The entry in the columns. So. Yeah, the steps are concrete. So that's right. And and a new owner may not choose to use those steps as an entrance. Right, right. It's, it's, it seems like a really sticky. Well, but you'd have to have you'd have to have something like the steps there or you just have a chopped off facade. Right. I don't know. You know, Judy's right about the regrading, and that might change the whole. Well, I think you'd have to maintain the steps because the front wouldn't work anyway. We might have to add a little bit at the bottom or something, but the front wouldn't work without that. Hmm. Well, let's just leave it as it is. But I was I was intrigued that they had they had carve this one entity out, although they very, had very specific requirements for everything else. And this was a very specific requirement. It had to look the same and act the same. Right, I mean, there's on the state historic preservation listserv, there are periodically, you know, impassioned arguments about replacing various components of historic buildings with material that looks like, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, who thinks, I mean, looks like is in the eye of the beholder, right? Um, yeah, actually, I think there are, there are solar panels that look like slate now, huh. little. But. So, um, it sounds as though we should set another meeting date specifically to talk about this, and we should all we should all make a commitment to walk around the building <laughs> and look at it <laughs> before we meet again. And, and I don't think it'll take very long. I mean, there aren't more than seven or eight components that we would be discussing. You know, it's roof, windows, brickwork, cupola. cupola. Exactly. Yeah. 
entryway there, columns, the pilasters. Yeah. There's so maybe maybe there are room. maybe there are a dozen, but there aren't fifty. Yeah, yeah. If they're all on the exterior, and we're presumably going to say that amendments that are necessary for any um, ADA accessibility purposes uh, may be made, right? Right. I mean, we certainly did that with Town Hall. We chopped off the horrible addition to Mac and made a difference. So we threw a lift into it and we put, well, yeah. Yeah, we did. I'm not sure that, that the, you know, if you specify the patterns of windows as important, we may need to think about how that's worded because you wouldn't want the accessibility to interfere with the front steps, say, or. Um, well, I think I, that's why I'm suggesting that we should each go and look at it so that we're sure that whatever we say is that we, we at least yes. all have the same understanding of whatever it is we're saying. Um, would anyone be, I, I will look at the preservation restriction documents and try to block something out that seems like it might meet our needs, not, not to the kind of lawyerly stage of um, thoroughness, but at least so it's something that we can talk about. Would anyone be willing to um, draft the list of the most important components, exterior components? Uh, I'll try and come up with something and um, circulate it and people can add as they- That would be great. Thank you, can, thank you. That would be great. We can subtract, <laughs> subtract at the meeting. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Anything else we should talk about regarding the center school? You might you might also look at some of the other templates and just see if there's anything important that's not in the town hall one because oh, it I, was no, I absolutely will. Yeah. And um, I and one issue, and I don't know what to do about it, but is insurance. And that wasn't, I don't, I just skimmed them today. You mean um, you mean that if we're that if it if it's a restriction that pertains to a private owner, we want to we want to require um, replacement. Might, is that what you mean? I want to think about it differently than if it's the town. And I don't. I mean, one thing that's standard in a lot of these preservation restrictions is insurance that covers replacement costs. For right, the, right, right. For the Which, historic elements, and I'm not sure that that I don't think that was in the town hall one. I don't think it is. Um, um, I don't know that we want to require it, but maybe there are other things that. Right, right. Well, I wanted to have this conversation first, but I will now um, get on the phone with Michael Steinitz at MHC and talk to him and ask for ask for advice. Um, I wanted us to talk first. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure we all own old houses. You know, the replacement costs, well, at least for this house, they about double. The, you know, it means we're insuring for about double the assessed value. Don't tell the assessors. <laughs> no. uh, um, okay. All right, are we good with that? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Uh, uh, the, the East School, Judy, why aren't you? Well, I, evidently, I was evidently you, there's activity on the East School. Um, they have. There's a dumpster in front of it. Yeah, uh, well, I saw somebody working down there or down there. They have applied for a special permit and site plan review. The site plan review application was so uh, incomplete. We sent it back and asked for a total redo. Um, it really didn't tell anything. I haven't seen the what they sent the ZBA for site plan review, and they. Um, but I gather it had interior drawings, and they're proposing nine apartments. Um, and you think they're different? You, you think they might be different from the plans that we saw five years ago? I have no, I, I have no idea. You don't no. know. I, I mean, I remember 10 apartments, but I could just I think. remember him talking about that. That was 10, the number that stuck in my head, too. 10. But um, what, what I don't know is 
what provision of this? Nine apartments aren't legal on that site the way for regular zoning. So I assume that they will have to be applying under this reuse zoning. But if they, but I don't know that they know that. Right. In, it, in any event, I sent around the document about the reuse zoning that the, applies to the center school would also apply to the east school. Uh, one requirement of that is that the historical commission determined that the building is eligible for the special treatment. And the special treatment, treatment allows uses that wouldn't normally be there and allows relaxation of some, some primarily space requirements for the land, like uh, don't have to have as much parking and there are often restrictions on things like lot coverage, um, how much of an area can be non-permeable, and that's relaxed too. So uh, multifamily, anything bigger than a duplex would not be allowed on that site because it's not big enough. So I assume they'll be applying under this. So we need to decide if the building is, is important enough in Waitley's history to, to justify the, the special zoning treatment. Um, well, and I think we went a long ways toward doing that when we sent the letter we sent to the Mass Historical Commission about how important the building <laughs> is five years ago. I mean, we've, um, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I'm assuming there wouldn't be any problem here, but it's a, it, it is a requirement of the bylaw. Which we yeah, it is. And, and actually, Judy, I was very pleased. I was pleased with myself because I had also sent the bylaw around two or three weeks ago and I actually got the right bylaw. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, I, um, I'm a little surprised by what you're describing because I think that Bob O'Bear does this. This is his business, isn't it? Buying historic buildings and restoring them and making them into housing. Yeah, but everybody's zoning is different. Yeah, I don't know. I, I they I, were I, a little. They were a little. Um, put a lot of work in in their application for the tax. Well, tax their 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 historic preservation consultant didn't know anything compared to what Judy knows. I mean, he, yeah. So we so, we wrote that. I mean, <laughs> we. So I don't we, know what <laughs> what they sent. What they sent the planning board was a, an engineer plot plan from when it was the, the school, probably at the time it was sold to Frontier with some hand drawn parking spaces and a place where they showed a dumpster, period. Mm -hmm. Whereas the bylaw requires that they get a full engineering drawing show, show the driveways, the lighting, the, the materials used on the driveway, where the septic's going, the size of the septic, what, what the drainage is, you know. Um, like a site plan. Shows the zone. <laughs> no. There's, right. I mean, it's, you're supposed to hire an engineer and and most of these plans are like five pages of engineer drawings and we get this little little um old engineering plot plan with some magic markers on it which was quite surprising so so and i don't know, know where the hurricane was coming ashore yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and its trajectory, right? Yeah, <laughs> where Alabama is. Um, but I had to laugh when you were talking about a known quantity. I know somebody was interested in the center school because I thought maybe he's not as known as we think he is. But. Uh, right. Um, so I think it just we need, of course, to vote on whether or not to write the letter. And I, if, if the letter we sent um, uh, about the um, center school was, you know, three sentences long. It's not yeah, it's, it's, it's just a pro forma thing. 
Um, but whether it makes sense for us to attempt to be in contact with the, the owners. I, I'd wait uh, and see what develops. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. That we shouldn't. We shouldn't get out in front of whatever is happening with the planning board and the um, CBA. No. And those those reviews can happen simultaneously. I ask. I'm always asking this and not understanding yeah. how it is that they can happen simultaneously. Well, unless. Where the zoning is clear, if if it's if the zoning is uncertain, sometimes that's hard for this planning board to do the site plan because we're not quite sure what's going to be allowed. But in this case, it I don't think that's necessarily an issue. But of course, I haven't seen what they're coming back with. <laughs> Well, I really hope they have a decent plan for that building. I think they've been concentrating so much on the interior, they haven't thought about the exterior very much. Um, so I think I should ask if um, there is a motion to uh, endorse the East School as an historically significant building in the town of Waitley that would warrant waiving some of the existing zoning limitations. Well, um, it would I make it eligible for this historic building reuse zoning. I, I would phrase it. Okay, right, 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 right. What Judy said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move that. Second. Would, would you mind repeating that? <laughs> I move that we determine that the East School is appropriately significant to be eligible for the historical um, building reuse provision in the bylaw. Any any further discussion? Okay, uh, and and that we but that we delay sending a letter until we hear that. Uh, no, I, I'd send a letter right away. Oh, that's what I was asking you. That's what I was asking. Oh, you I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought you were wanting to contact the send a letter to the ZBA and the planning board. I thought you were wanting to contact the owners. My well, I, I was. I guess I'm I'm engaging in discussion. Um, I guess I was wondering whether we ought at least to copy our letter <laughs> to the owner to know that we're doing that. Sure. sure. Um, I think we could find an address. I think Brian must have an address. We must have had an address when we were go doing to the that. assessors. Yes, you can go to the assessors. The yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, uh, should we then vote? All in cool. favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay, Aye. great, thanks. Um, I'll just do that. So Alan, your indicators for likely archeological sites. Do you wanna walk us through that? Yeah, just very briefly. What I'm trying to figure out is um, how do we, when we send a letter to the planning board or whoever we send it to about significance, what on earth does that mean? What is our authority in doing so? Um, so I tried to walk through a couple of ways of doing surveys, uh, archaeological surveys. One is for prehistoric archaeology, um, <laughs> which tends to depend on environmental models. How close are you to water? How good is land for farming or hunting or whatever it is? Um, and that sort of thing. Well, historical things tend to uh, rely more on map research and talking to people who might actually have some memories of it or uh, some, some visibility to the, the thing that you're trying to determine whether it's sensitive. So I've 
um, tried to outline what sorts of things we might think about doing or asking people to do, or when we need to tell people, that, yeah, they need to do a professional survey, or yeah, the thing seems to be sensitive, but we're not really all that able to do anything about it. So beyond that, um, you know, some sample statements that might go to the planning board, you know, things that are of high sensitivity, lower sensitivity, um, both prehistorically and historically. Um, and trying to, which I think over this more and more, it's, it's more of a, what we do locally, what, what is our town willing to do or able to do uh, in determining whether something is significant enough to look for or uh, significant enough to do something about if something is found. So there seem to be two different activities that are going on. One is, you know, when you look at a, at a place or a structure, is it significant or not? And prehistorically, that's um, a judgment call. And we can make some of that call ourselves and say, yeah, this, we need to look at this more closely and somebody needs to pay for it. And that's you, uh, whoever the, uh, the recipient of the letter is. Or um, you, the applicant. Yeah, the applicant yeah. is going to be responsible for it. Um, Otherwise, just saying, yeah, this looks like it's sensitive, but we have no real authority to say anything about it, but uh, or to do anything about it. But this is what we'd recommend. Um, this is what it looks like to us, um, even though we don't, we may not have a whole lot of uh, background information to to forward it to, to behind it. Oh, beyond that, I guess I'm sort of looking for comments and and the like that might improve it or see whether we actually want to use this thing at all um, for uh, trying to figure out what how sensitive things are that come to our attention. Um, if we're going to look at it, if somebody's going to spend money on building something, uh, what is it that we want to say? And what is it that matters to the town? Well, I don't think we have to worry too much, Alan, about what matters to the town, because in this regard, we are the town. I mean, it is part of our responsibility to educate the town, you know, to, to be whatever passes for local experts in prehistoric and historic archaeology. I mean, you're right, of course, if it came to, are we going to destroy something or not? Of course, that is a town decision. Yeah, but we are the ones making the decision. We're the ones doing the some of the basic background research right. uh, that will identify something as potentially significant. And we want to let people know that it, it might be. And if it's, we have a legal responsibility, if it's on the National Register, or if it's using federal funds or state funds or anything like that um, to, uh, to do the work that's being proposed, but beyond that, we may have some sort of moral responsibility to say, think, yeah, this looks sensitive to us and we think you need to be a bit more careful than usual. Um, so. Allison, is your hand up because you're about to- No, no, speak, sorry. Or no, is no. it just up? <laughs> yeah, just up. It was an ambiguous hand. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, um, wondered who the audience is for this document as written. I, I thought we initiated this for the uh, town road crew, you know, or the we were talking about it when they were putting in the pumping station, you know, over by the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Didn't it come up then? Uh, so, I know, but I'm aiming this more at us. Yeah. yeah some of our some of the people that we talk to a lot and the road crew of you might be an appropriate group to to talk with about this sort of thing people are building things generally are in areas that are zoned for uh, non-agricultural activities uh, 
that don't have a whole lot of sensitivity in us that is, they're on a historic map someplace. Uh, prehistoric, it's hard, harder to tell, but they might be. Um, what do other people think about the question of audience for a document like this? To me, this goes along with what we had said when, and I forget if it was zoning or planning, when there's an application and we have our, we instead of us each time issuing a letter, got them to include standard language. Uh, to me, this kind of goes along with that of anyone doing any sort of construction digging you know beyond your little vegetable garden you know in the yard kind of thing who needs to apply for permit would get this as guidelines for what how to know because we tell them let us know if you find something but they don't really you know they may not know what that means um I really like Alan's um, the evaluation criteria for prehistoric sites, which I know you you got from some of your or you drew on the work of some of your colleagues at UMass. Oh, yeah. um, I, it, because <laughs> it it made sense to me when I read it and thought about it, but I don't know that I could have come up with it on my own. <laughs> you know, I That's thought that what, right, what right, are. right. Um, and it, it made me think about historic um, sites that I'm not even sure how many town residents would understand that finding certain um, arrangements of stones just under the surface of the earth might mean that there was a foundation there. Yeah. You know, some would and some wouldn't would be my guess, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not immediately obvious, but if you're looking for it, you can find it. But if you don't think it's there or don't know it's there, it's easy to overlook. But this is, I mean, this has meant more as guidelines for us. What, what, what are we looking for when we make these recommendations to people? Um, what are the kinds of things that are sitting in the background that we want to think about when we're making recommendations to the planning board or that the, um, the road crews or whoever. Um, I'm trying to put it in as, as simply as I can. To, you know, that people like us will look at it and think, okay, I can use this and this is a reason for doing or not doing something. I think it's a very good outline and it really gets you thinking. I've been trying to think about it, using it from the planning board's perspective. And I have a hard time as, as Susan put it, sort of as a guide to go with people when they apply one thing, but um, the prehistoric in is so much of town land. <laughs> and I- It can, yeah. I don't. And I guess another issue, you know, it's why it might be more useful for us is issues like what is undisturbed? If it's been plowed forever, is that undisturbed or not? Um, but that's not, not for discussion now. Um, what I was curious how the, the statements at the end fit with the beginning, because I, I think I would have a very hard time requiring a a professional will be hired every time somebody built something near the Mill River, for instance, you know, because that's within 300 yards of the Mill River. That's that covers a heck of a lot of town. Um, it does. And a lot of the commercial zone. So it, for us as a guideline, it's great. Maybe for the owners, for the thing to look to if they're, if they're, if they are digging, but I'm, I think we would have to be very, We'd have to really have some fairly definitive knowledge to to recommend an expert be hired. Yeah, to recommend yeah. to recommend a reconnaissance survey, which yeah. is what what one of Alan's. Uh, yeah, I wondered about that too. 
Well, the constant survey is really only required if something is used in federal or state funds or loan guarantees. That's you know beyond that. If if they're not, if they're on, it's on private. Well, we property. can re we can require it. We, we well, can, we can ask for this. We, we can require. ask for it. Yeah. 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 Uh, but you included that, Alan, in your first sample statement, which is the one that starts, there is a high potential for prehistoric activity in this area. Yeah. Um, but it does, it can cover a lot of ground, a thousand feet from a fresh water source is not far from anything locally. Um, but perhaps the volume of the source makes a difference as well. There are a lot of small streams around, especially up in the hills, but they're also on pretty poor quality land and you don't expect very much in the way of um, anything large up there. Down in the flats, on, in each way, the, it, uh, things are much more likely. You can actually talk to farmers who find things up there quite, quite frequently. Yeah. Well, and and talking about small streams and large streams, just thinking about the way Westbrook contracted and expanded over the last 12 months, which wasn't what maybe was a little more remarkable than would have been normal because of that extended drought. But you know, how do we define small or large? <laughs> I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. The, the criteria are kind of loose in some ways. So it's um, not easy to put it down. It's an advantage in some ways, a disadvantage in others. But. Yeah. Um, could it, if we, if we took this to the point where we had um, information sheets, something yeah. that we could post on our part of the town website, for example, we have a lot of educational material on the town website. Um, I am wondering whether it might make sense to um, disentangle the prehistoric and the historic. The, the means of assessment are quite different. The points of evidence are quite different. I mean, you could format them similarly, but to- They, they are and they aren't. I mean, they they, they, the, the, the differentiation is, is in actually in the wording, the preferred criteria would be any kind of historic reference, you know, something that's written or local knowledge or maps or, you know, something post written word. Right. But because there's human presence that precedes that capacity, then you default to geographic and geological criteria for your analysis. Right, Alan? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, it's it, it's it, it, there's, there's an awful lot more information available about historic I mean, historic I mean the geologic and the geographic right. criteria yeah. apply to historic sites and, and especially the early ones as well. well it's just that we also have you know written evidence to go by. And there's a lot of map information that we don't have well, for right. historic stuff. Right. People made drawings over the last 200 years of what the town looked like, um, which are extremely helpful in trying to find things. Because that's where people found it. That's what people found interesting. They built things there. And there may not be an actual structure. So if somebody looks for mines and like, that might be harder to find, but it's also very limited in area. So hmm. it's maybe easier to define. But it might be the sort of thing for people to look for. I, I don't know. So I don't want to get too detailed in the thing because it's going to be so particular that yeah. it's unusable. But at the same time, I want to talk about the town and what what our town looks like to an archaeologist. Um, you know, you we could would would it be worth considering making some kind of map, Alan? That that you know, color grades certain areas that are related to waterways, you know, at certain elevations that, as yeah. a guide. That seems like a possibility, yeah. Um, Takes into account terrain and 
aspect and slope and kinds of things? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fair amount of work. Even a small survey requires a lot of time. Um, well, no, sometimes. I'm talking about something that, you know, a bunch of us could sit down with a map of weight, a topo map of Waitley and draw, mm -hmm. you know, some lines around. Rough outlines of things that might be sensitive. Yeah, I mean. And, and, and also areas that don't need to be considered, like along the 91 corridor, I think, is a useless place to look for anything. Because yeah. it's been disturbed beyond repair. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's I dug up. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, and you could At use... the bottom of the burrow pit. You know, I don't think we need to look down there. Probably not. No. Although, <laughs> I mean, there is a, um, a prehistoric site buried under a parking lot in the... Um, right. Uh, On purpose. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Buried under which parking lot? Uh, one of the um, the Irvings, no, no, it, it's one of the. Uh, no, no, it's one of the, off the one. Of, what's the company name? Like Miltech. I'm not sure who's. Uh, I don't know. Um, off of one sixteen, one of those industrial plants. Oh, oh. somebody, oh. somebody did find a paleo site up there and excavated it partly and um, then buried it. We know I where mean, it you... was. You can you can take this to a ridiculous level. Um, yep. We're convinced that there must have been some sort of structure about halfway down our hill because there are so many daffodils down there. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, it could also have been some very enterprising squirrels. <laughs> but you know, these are these are cultivated daffodils. They are not <laughs> native yeah. jonquils, which don't exist. But anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's another bad way to well, find anyway, it. Alan, I would work on that with you. If I mean, if you guys thought that was useful, I think it is something we could try to generate it, you know, with, with the caveat that it's just a general, you know. Yeah, there, there are oh, some areas that are probably, that are more sensitive than others, so. Yeah. I, think it, I think it would be really useful and you could, yeah. and, and you could use some of the mass GIS information. Oh, yeah. yeah a lot a, of it would come off of that. Right. Yeah, I well, think that has the be... maps embedded in it, as well as some yeah. of the soil maps. I think are in there as well. I'm, um, I mean, it seems to me this kind of work doesn't have a deadline, and if it has the potential to educate the public, we should take some time and and do it in a way, you know, add some photographs, you know, add some drawings. Um, yeah. And I think that would be terrific. I, I, um, I, I would. One of the reasons I was asking Allison, I mean Alan, about your audience was that I was I had printed it and I was looking at the links and kind of thinking, well, where will this reside? <laughs> you know, because yeah. if it has links, it has to be online or it's not useful. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not being critical. Well, I mean, it really going, that's yeah. what got me thinking about it. Um, So um, is that where we are we do you want do we want to leave it that way there that Allison and Alan will work on this when they that's a great Alan, idea. I wasn't trying to make work for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That that actually would be a good idea. That's the thing I can do. He can flex his yeah. leg while you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Something like that. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Really okay. great. Yeah. We'll keep. We'll take our way with it. All right, thank you. Um, so North Street, Judy's been working. I printed this, but I haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> That's why I'm holding it in my hand. Well, I, we don't need to discuss it tonight, but I realized I'd had an outline of how one approaches this in my mind and maybe it would help people if I put mm -hmm. it down on paper. Mm -hmm. And so all I did is take the things that are required in the area form and <laughs> list them and with a little yeah it's sort of a, a combination of the the area form topics uh, of little information from the the um, technical support material they sent which is too long for anybody to read and then 
I put in some thoughts about, about how we might approach the history. But, um, and, and the idea here was that we could, you know, break down responsibilities and, and segment the work so it wouldn't be all fall on one person or two. Um, Judy, in your 20th century bullet points, we can add picnic grounds since as part of our research for the Roaring Brook exhibit, we have now some Well, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things we can add, I, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And, um, uh, and the other thing I wanted to say is that I've- um, Except that would depend if we, I don't know that we firmly, I thought we kind of decided that Roaring Brook was not in the district, but that's- that's another. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's another I, I was thinking especially about the Johnson picnic grounds, the ones that Sylvia's. We did. We did decide that. Okay, I didn't know about those. And how we decided that we're doing all of North Street or only North Street to Nasami. I don't remember that. Oh. I thought we decided to do up to up to Hillside because of the dairy. Okay, we have. All oh, right. right. All right, right. It says that here. Okay. Um, you know, but again, this is this mm -hmm. is you know, maybe we haven't decided. I this was just a, a way to get people thinking. But yeah, if if I I think if you're make, focusing on dairy, you have to include hillside. Mm -hmm. And then if you include Hillside, then, then you have to include the campground because that's part of mm -hmm. part of that property's history. But also, you, I do think that maybe you want to include the, the part of town that was annexed in 1810. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't need to discuss tonight, but it was it was a, just a way to get us started. Will I, well, I have a question about the contemporary photos. Will we, um, well, just to tell you, um, uh, for the Historical Society, Derricka Smith has, oh, I, you know this, that she's finished her rough drafts for the history of ownership um, for the houses, because I sent out the ones she had done on North Street. And I um, proposed, well, now some months ago, that um, before they're formatted properly and saved, uh, you know, put up on the Historical Society's website that we should have a contemporary um, photograph of each of the buildings that are extant on the on the state, you know, the list of the information about ownership. And in fact, this is a good time for me to say that since there are about 200 of them, if anyone would like to volunteer to, to take some photographs, I'd be, that would be just great. Okay. Yeah, well, we, yeah, that would be great because I've woken up to the fact that April and May would be just the perfect time. You know, the Christmas wreaths are finally gone. Except at the library. Except at the <laughs> library where we seem to now be forever. in perpetual, perpetual. Yes, yes, yes. They're, um, they're dropping needles, but they're still up. Um, I think for this. Or would, it be, four, would six, it be photos six, of the region really, you know, the sort of the vistas. Yeah. Um, actually, for this, I would suggest that it be photos of the more significant, more architecturally sig significant houses, and then the more culturally sensitive outbuildings, and not all that many, like right. maybe a total of six or seven or eight. Right, right. That's what I was thinking of the area. But in any case, I just wanted to say the royal we will be getting will be taking photos in the next couple of months anyway um so we could start with north street houses um, and get them done um, they want they want side front and side you don't want to take them straight on they give some sense of the side a, a single view that shows two Two facades, yeah. yeah, two sides, yeah, yeah. Well, a good thing is that most of the old buildings in uh, town are so close to the road that you can just stand on the road and take them. You know, you don't have to yeah. go through a whole lot of... Um, so where should we leave this? Well, 
Well, we've got enough on our plate for a while. Um, do. It occurred to me that one thing, maybe the place to start is with, if, if we agreed on an area to start with that data sheet, which would then help people. I don't know where we should be. If, if there are people who are interested in working on particular parts of it, they could get to work, I guess. Like we probably need an, a, a better sense of hillsides history than is in, I, I read their area form, it's, it's not, it doesn't really get very much into the dairy. No. Mm. Um, I haven't looked at Quancon, so I'm sorry. I don't think there even is one for Fairview. Um, there's not one for the Scott farm. Belders is a house form, not a not an area form. Oh, so there's and a lot of work. There's a lot yeah. of work to be done. Okay. Well, I have there's some I have some newspaper search results that apply to Hillside and even Fairview, and I'll try to find those and put them in a folder all together. I have somewhere a whole bunch on Hillside from when the Baronesses gave a big scrapbook and I scanned it. If, if I don't, the Historical Society does. Okay. And I think when Dottie died, there was a lot about the date of the, the campground. Her, her obituary had quite a bit of Baronis uh, hillside, hillside and history of their, they had a lot of auto shows and you're, you're talking you're dementia. talking about Mary Baronis's mother who just died in the last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it taught, but it had dates for certainly for the, for when the campground was built. And actually there's a so um, uh, should we uh, should we say that when we next meet, we'll each have thought about what we're willing to take on regarding this project? <laughs> so let's like let's pause and mm -hmm. um, and in that, is there any other business? Not to me. I've got another meeting in less than an hour. Okay. Okay. I want. I have a photo of. Uh, the center school that I just wanted to screen share with you. Do you guys want to see it? I might have to do something. Just a sec. Can I hit share screen? That's what I'm not. I'm not. Oh, share screen. Wait. Um, Under security, there's something to allow participants to share. But Under I'm, security. Which is a weird where, place. For where is security? Where is security? Along, it's, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Along the bottom. Okay, I've done it. Thank you, Susan. Sure. I think I've done it, Allison. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. See right here in the lower left. This is this is the view from my front yard. Oh yeah. There, so there's the okay, door. I'm. Cool. That's there's, the door I was asking about. Super, super, and super. Here's here's a detail. Super. So I assume if that door's there, the other door's there, but I don't know. Yeah. When was this? Well, it's a little hard to it. I don't. I don't have a date on it. Prop maybe at the historical society they have one that's dated. There's there's telephone lines here. Uh, obviously, it's after 1910, but it it's that style of photograph that I would say it's not much past the 20s. Yeah, there are a whole lot of these photographs that were made in the teens, and they were printed yeah, in Germany. Say, yeah. And this looks this looks to me like. Yep. Whole lot of the photographs we we used for Waitley Glen. Yeah. yeah. And even the hand lettering looks and we like, we we even right. sort of know when the telephone poles came through, you know, which I think was in the single digits. Yes, it was. That is on hidden history, actually. That's right. Yeah, so but I don't remember everything. I would say if on. I had a guess, I'd say it's 1915, you know, 1920, which makes yeah. you think that was original to the building. That they mm -hmm. didn't add that five years after they built a school. 
-hmm. Yeah, this well, it's is got the same. It's got the same um, little overhang. Little overhang as the one on the south side. Okay. Right. The but the overdoor uh, trim. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's great. Right. I don't I don't think I've seen that before, Allison. Is that yours? Yep. Oh, that's great. Really good. I assume through. that the Historical Society has one of everything. Uh, we could go through the yeah. famous. I'll, I'll send, it, I'll send it to y'all. And you, Historical Society has that, I'm sure. You've seen that? It's um, the post. Yeah, you say that, but can they find it? I mean, that's. Uh, well, the postcard book is, you know, rich and full. <laughs> but on, but on catalog. Or on, um, not in, in a particular order. Okay, let's, Alan has another meeting. And um, how about, how about Monday night, April 3rd, which is two weeks for tonight from today? Would that work for you all? Okay. Hold on, let me check. Um, yeah. Uh, could be. I think so. Um, I have a meeting from four to five thirty, but uh, which I would, on the one hand, be very happy to leave, but um, if we could meet at five thirty, that would be great. And if we can't, it's okay. I'm okay with that. Five thirty is fine. Fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. And I will never again send fourteen documents on the day of the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when Google won't let people get to them. <laughs> no. We'll hold you to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Alan, for taking okay. minutes. Goodbye.